Krishnadas Kaviraj describes, as I mentioned, that the, the sprout of love of God was Madhavendra Puri, and the young sapling was Ishwar Puri, and the full-grown tree was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, this mood was completely transferred from Madhavendra Puri to Ishwar Puri. Now, Ishwar Puri was born in the town of Kumarahat. Kumarahat is a, a very, very nice place. Uh, many, many wonderful devotees come from there. Uh, it's um, a place that's known as a seat of Gaudiya Vaishnava pastimes. Uh, this is actually where Srivas and his brothers lived after Mahaprabhu's Navadvip pastimes finished and Mahaprabhu went to Puri. Srivas and his brothers, uh, um, Sri Nalini, Sri Pati, and Sri. I can't remember the fourth one. They couldn't stand living in Navadweep anymore because everywhere they turned, all they saw was memories of the pastimes of the Lord. So they moved to Kumarahat. So in this place of Kumarahat was previously where Ishwar Puri had taken his birth. And uh, so this is a, a very, very wonderful Vaishnava place. Now, Ishwar Puri is the sannyas name. And prior to that, his previous life and his previous name are not known. Um, we do know that his father's name was Sham Sundar Acharya. And Sham Sundar Acharya uh, gave birth to the son and, I mean, uh, you know, uh, was the father of, uh, of the son. And uh, beyond that, there's no information that's readily available. I'm sure somewhere out there in some forgotten Vaishnava writing is the life of Ishwar Puri. Maybe in this lifetime, if I'm fortunate, I'll find that. But for the sake of this presentation, all we know is that his father's name was Sham Sundar Acharya, that he took birth in Kumarahat, and that it ultimately took initiation from Madhavendra Puri. Uh, the nature of Madhavendra Puri's devotional service we described previously, uh, just a few moments ago, in the life of uh, Madhavendra Puri, I mean, the nature of Ishwar Puri's devotional service we described in relationship to his service to Madhavendra Puri and his mood of humility. Not only did he manifest that mood of humility in the type of service he rendered to his spiritual master when he became invalid, but always engaged in chanting of the holy name, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra during that time, and uh, in assisting his spiritual master by reminding him of different pastimes of the Lord. This is the mood of a proper disciple to assist the spiritual master in remembering Krishna. So Madhavendra Puri did like this and uh, was very pleasing to Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri said to Ishwar Puri upon his service in that way, he gave him, may you be blessed with Krishna Prema. And so this Krishna Prema did manifest and the additional benediction which Ishwar Puri received was to become the spiritual master of Madhavendra, um, excuse me, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, Srila Prabhupada points out in this connection a very important point here that the mercy of the spiritual master is what causes one to develop perfection in their devotional life. That a Vaishnava is always protected by the personality of Godhead. But if he appears to be invalid, this gives a chance to the disciple to perfect his service to the spiritual master and thus ultimately get the blessings of the spiritual master. So this we saw in our own relationship with Srila Prabhupada in his uh, final pastimes. As his body became invalid, uh, some of us were fortunate enough to be there and render some menial services like that to Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> so after uh, um, his uh, youthful pastimes and his uh, uh, getting initiated by um, Madhavendra Puri and Madhavendra Puri's departure, then Ishwar Puri began to travel to different holy places. And one of the holy places he travels to is Navadweep, to uh, the uh, seat of Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is present in his Navadweep Leela as a young boy, Nimai Pandit at this time. And so um, Ishwar Puri, uh, traveling in this way, stays in Navadweep at the home of Gopinathacharya. And so in this time period at the home of Gopinathacharya, he goes out you know, during the day on different pilgrimage and chanting and going around like that and he comes to know that Advaita Charya is living just nearby in um, um, Krishna Nagar not, not Krishna Nagar uh, uh, excuse me I 
lose the memory of it now. Uh, at any rate, that Advaita Charya is just nearby and uh, residing there. So uh, Ishwar Puri goes, because remember Advaita Charya is his godbrother. They were both initiated by Madhavinda Puri. So, but uh, Ishwar Puri is a bit in disguise, kind of covering his actual identity, not letting it known. So he comes to the place where um, Advaita Charya is, and uh, Shantipur, Shantipur, there we go, I remembered it. So Advaita Charya is in Shantipur, so uh, uh, Ishwar Puri goes there. And when he arrives there, he's not appearing to be a Vaishnava sannyasi. Now, at that time, Advaita Charya had Mukunda with him. Mukunda Dada. Mukunda Dada, as you all remember, is a very excellent kirtan singer. So, Advaita Charya sees that this personality has come, and he says, oh, he says, my dear brother, who are you? You seem like you might be a Vaishnava sannyasi. You're not appearing in that way, though. And so Ishwarpur replies to him, he says, oh, he says, I am just a low-class sudra. I simply come here to take the darshan of your lotus feet. And uh, Mukunda also heard this exchange and could understand that, no, he is disguising who he really is. So Mukunda hatched a plan, and he began to sing some beautiful song glorifying Sri Krishna. And when he sang this verse, actually Vrindavan Das Thakur mentions, who can resist the kirtan of Mukunda? Who will not be moved by Mukunda's kirtan? So in this way, he began to sing. And then hearing this kirtan, Ishwar Puri fell to the ground in ecstasy and began to manifest all the symptoms of love of God. So the devotees present, Mukunda and others, they said, well, we haven't seen a devotee of this caliber in so long. And Advaita Charya went over and he raised him up and he deeply embraced him, put him to his chest and he said, it is you, Ishwar Puri, you tried to hide your identity from me, but you were not successful. And then the entire assembly of devotees broke into an uproarious kirtan, chanting the holy name and dancing in great ecstasy. And in this way, everyone had just this very, very wonderful time. So, in this way, Ishwar Puri lived in the Navadvip area for some time, staying in Gopinath, associating with Advaita Charya like that. Now, one day, he happened to meet Nimai Pandit on the footpath, as they were both walking. Now, many people assume falsely that the first time Mahaprabhu met Ishwar Puri was when he went to Gaya and took initiation from him. But this is actually not correct. Ishwar Puri was living in Navadui prior to Mahaprabhu accepting sannyas, living there temporarily, and he actually met him one day prior to his giving him initiation in Gaya. So he happened to see him coming by. Mahaprabhu was returning from his school studies. He, it's not clear whether he had already established his own school or whether he was attending a school, but he was returning. And upon seeing Mahaprabhu, Ishwar Puri was completely amazed by the perfect physical form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his extremely grave disposition, his uh, mindset like that. Now, this is completely different than the other mood that some of the associates of Mahaprabhu got to see because this is the same time at which Mahaprabhu was constantly arguing with this one and that one and causing disruption. So in this way, he was becoming a bit more grave as he entered into his uh, preparing for his uh, sannyas lila. He had not yet finished up the Navadvi pastimes. So uh, Ishwar Puri called out to him, Oh, best of the Brahmanas, what is your name? Where is your home? And what is it that you are reading? So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in great humility, offered his obeisances to Ishwar Puri, understanding him to be an advanced Vaishnava sannyasi. And Mahaprabhu's disciples all said, You do not know? This, oh, so this must have been, because it was his disciples, right? So this would have been after he had established his school. So the disciples all said, You do not know? This is the famous Nimai Pandit. And Ishwar Puri said, You are the Nimai Pandit? I have had the chance to now meet Nimai Pandit. I have heard so much about you. So it mentions that Ishwar Puri's joy knew no bounds upon getting the opportunity to meet Nimai Pandit. But that Mahaprabhu felt quite the opposite. He felt extremely humble and bowed his head and said, My Sripad, he said, If you please have mercy upon me, come to my home, bless my home, and give me your company and allow me to provide you with your meals. So in this way, uh, uh, Ishwar Puri said, all right, I will come. So Ishwar Puri came to the home of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, at that time, Matasachi prepared some nice prasadam. And it mentions that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu washed the lotus feet of Ishwar Puri when he came into his home. 
and not, not only just poured the water, but washed and dried with his own hands the lotus feet of Ishwar poured. And that Mother Sachi prepared different types of foods and offered them to the deity, Shalagram Shila that they worshipped. It was a, a Kurma Shila. And then uh, prepared those and then gave those uh, Mahaprasad to Ma Maha Mahaprabhu. And then Mahaprabhu gave that Mahaprasad to Ishwar Puri in this way. So then they entered into the temple of Lord Vishnu just after that, and they sat and discussed the pastimes of uh, the Lord, different uh, topics of Krishna Katha for quite some time. And then eventually it mentions the mood of Krishna Prema sprang up in their conversations and flooded the room in their hearts with Prema Bhakti, and love of God had manifested from them in this way. So for one month, Ishwar Puri stayed at the home of Gopinath and would come regularly to Mahaprabhu's home for his lunch and engage in Krishna Kata. So we see that there was some foundation being built for Mahaprabhu meeting Ishwar Puri later in Gaya. So in this way, uh, Mahaprabhu would invite him and they would share the pastime. So this is the beginning. Now, during this time, Gadadhar was a young boy. Uh, you remember that he was younger than Mahaprabhu and Ishwarpur was very, very affectionate to him and he would be in this uh, group of devotees and all that they would see. And so um, he would read to Gadadhar from a book he had written that Ishwarpur had written called Sri Krishna Lilamrita. <clears throat> now, uh, uh, every day after sunrise, when Mahaprabhu got up and performed his activities, he would come before Ishwar Puri and he would offer obeisances to him. Because here again, this is very close. Gopinath's house is not that far, so we'd go by like that. And so one day Ishwar Puri said to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, you are the topmost of pundits. You are a very learned personality. He says, I am writing this book about Krishna's pastimes. And if you would be so kind, if you could please look at it and point out whatever faults and shortcomings are there, please make any corrections. If you would do this, it would give me great pleasure. So sitting at the lotus feet of Ishwar Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke these words. He said, the words of Krishna's devotees are as good as Krishna speaking himself. They are in the same category as Krishna. They are from the alphabet of Krishna. They are not from a material alphabet. Such words are not to be considered mundane. Anyone who would find fault with the words of Krishna's devotees is a great sinner. What a bhakta writes is not merely just poetry. It is completely different. It is dear to Krishna and therefore it is perfect. A devotee's prayers of love for Krishna have nothing to do with the rules of grammar and do not depend upon those rules of grammar. Krishna is only interested in the love that is expressed in such prayers. Those prayers are dear to Krishna in any case, whether they are written properly or not according to the rules of grammar and logic and poetry. One who looks for the faults in such words of a devotee will never please Sri Krishna. So when Ishwarpur heard these words from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it says he felt as if his entire body had been drenched with the pure nectar. So Ishwar Puri could understand, this Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as I expected, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So anyway, a few days later, then Ishwar Puri left, and he continued on his pilgrimage, leaving Navadweep. So in this way, the uh, pastimes of Lord Gorasundra's scholarship and Grahasta life wound themselves up. They began to come to an end. And Mahaprabhu wanted to reveal his divine identity and drench the world, it mentions, in the nectar of the holy name and to spread this uh, Krishna Prema all throughout the world. But in the particular circumstances he was in, that would not be able, excuse me, that would not be able to be done. So he made a plan to take sannyas. But before doing that, he wanted to go to Gaya and perform the final rites for his father who had departed. This was a proper thing for his son to do, is to go to Gaya and perform the Pinda ceremony, the last rites for the father. So at that time residing in Gaya was Ishwar Puri. Ishwar Puri had left Navadweep and traveled and is now staying in Gaya. So <clears throat> after some time in Gaya, Mahaprabhu finished his offering to the lotus feet of Vishnu. There's a Vishnu deity there that one goes and offers uh, uh, prayers on behalf of the forefathers for their deliverance. And he had finished uh, this activity 
and had taken care of his responsibilities. And when he went to the uh, temple of Lord Vishnu at that time, he began to uh, chant with his associates the holy name of the Lord. And in this way, being in front of the deity of Lord Vishnu and taking up the holy name in Kirtan, he began completely overwhelmed in ecstasy and fainted to the ground. Now, one of the devotees present at that time was Chandrasekhar Charya. And Chandrasekhar Charya could understand who Mahaprabhu was and immediately sent for Ishwar Puri. So that when Mahaprabhu returned to external consciousness, Ishwar Puri was right there by him. So at once Mahaprabhu arose and offered his obeisances to Ishwar Puri. And uh, it mentions at that time the two of them embraced one another. And that they were now, at this point, they were embracing and tears were coming from their eyes. And they began to experience all the devotional symptoms. I mean, we can see these things are very high caliber of relationships between the Vaishnavas. And then, as we saw in the exchanges between Nityananda Madhav and Dapuri, uh, Mahaprabhu began to say, Now my visit to this holy place of Gaia has borne the fruit that it should have. For by coming here, I have now had the shelter of your lotus feet again. By traveling to all the holy places and offering penda, one may deliver one's ancestors. That is for the person who delivers penda. But only by... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but one will attain eternal deliverance by taking shelter at the lotus feet of a Vaishnava such as you. So in this way, Mahaprabhu was appreciating the benefits of his having gone to Gaya and performed the penda for his father, but additionally, his being able to take the shelter at the lotus feet of Ishwar Puri. So in this way, with great humility, Mahaprabhu said to Ishwar Puri, he said, all of my visiting has now become purified because you yourself are the real Tirtha. You are the holy place because all of the knowledge of the holy places resides within you. So in this way, uh, he spent some time there and would listen and hear from Ishwar Puri. Uh, Ishwar Puri said to him, he said, my dear Pandit, he said, please listen. Upon seeing your learning and your divine character, I can understand that you are the divine personality of Godhead himself. You have descended among men simply for our benefit. This very day, I had a beautiful dream in the morning. In my dream, I saw many people with fruit bear, be, laden with fruit in their hands. O oh, Pandit, I speak this truthfully. Upon seeing you, I had this unusual feeling of transcendental bliss that one does not get from ordinary circumstances. In fact, after seeing you in Navadvipdam when I was visiting there, from that time forward I could not think of anything other than you. I did not want to know anything else other than associating with you. I am speaking the truth to you at this time. Upon seeing you, I felt as happy as if I had seen Sri Krishna himself. So hearing this, Mahaprabhu lowered his head and in great humility said, I am most fortunate by your association. So we see this wonderful mood. Mahaprabhu is the personality of Godhead, no doubt. But Ishwar Puri is taking the role of his instructing guru at this point, soon to be his Diksha guru. Taking the role in that way, so they're trading off their appreciation of each other and their feelings of humility. Now one thing it mentions that uh, Ishwar Puri cites that he had a dream and in that dream the people were bearing fruit in their hands. It mentions in the understanding of dreams that if you have a dream in the later morning before waking and people are bearing fruit in their hands, whatever is taking place in the dream will come to pass. Whatever you're thinking in that way. So, and anyway, after some days of staying in Gaya, Mahaprabhu, in a mood of great humility, approached Ishwar Puri. And he said, Your Holiness, please, I beg that you show mercy and initiate me into the Gayatri Mantra. Accept me as your disciple. For want of the Gayatri Mantra, my mind cannot find any peace. So in this way, Ishvar Puri was very, very happy. And he said, whether I give you these words, or whether you accept them from your own heart, it will not matter. But I wish to give you everything that I have, and therefore I will impart this to you. So in this way, he accepted him. We know that he initiated him at that time in Gaya. And then upon returning to... Uh, um, Upon returning to Navadweep, Lord Chaitanya began to manifest full-blown his mood of love of God in the beginning of his plans for spreading love of God in this way. So, um, it mentions that... Uh, let me just grab my chair. I thought you were going to erase this part. Space it out.
Ah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, before leaving, before leaving Gaya, after taking initiation, it mentions that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again invited uh, Ishwar Puri to the place where he was staying for Prashadam. And that in coming to that place, he offered obeisances, made all the proper arrangements for him, and uh, uh, begged that uh, Ishwar Puri would stay for Prashadam. And Ishwar Puri said, I will consider myself extremely fortunate if I am able to accept rice from your own lotus hand. So here again, even after giving initiation, still this mood of humility was exchanged between the two of them. And Mahaprabhu never accepted that. He always would then offer some humble response like that. So he then cooked and he offered and prepared the uh, food and gave it to Ishwar Puri. And then with his own lotus hand, he took sandalwood paste and smeared it onto the body of Madhavani Puri and put a garland on his neck. So in this way, he showed how one should worship the spiritual master, acquainted us with the process of giving all respect and praise to one's guru. So... In this way, playing this role as a disciple, he set the proper standard for us. And then he left the association of Ishwar Puri and he returned to Navadweep. And as we mentioned, upon returning to Navadweep, he began to manifest the full-blown mood of love of Godhead. Now, on his way back to Navadweep, he had to pass through Kumar Hut. And when passing through Kumar Hut, he stopped and he was so happy upon being at the birthplace of his spiritual master, he took one handful of dust from that place, some dirt, and wrapped it into his outer cloth. Now it mentions that following in his footsteps, many devotees in his association and others that came after him also took from that same spot Mahaprabhu had taken some dust to the point to where there's now one large lake there, one kund that is formed and filled with water from the rain and this is called the Chaitanya Doba. This is the place where Lord Chaitanya has taken the dust of his spiritual master's birthplace and, and worshiped that. So this is a very holy place to go to. So eventually it mentions in due course of time Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, renounced this world and went to live in Jagannath Puri under the instructions of his mother. And at that time, Ishwar Puri began to wrap up his pastimes. That he had no further need to be here. His express purpose was to give initiation to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu under the line coming from Madhavana Puri and to pass that fruit of love of Godhead down in that chain in that way. And so, uh, in this way, he began to finish his pastimes. And as he was departing from this world, he had two very prominent disciples, Govinda, Kashishwar Pandit. These were Ishwar Puri's disciples and he sent them to Puri and told them to be the personal servants of Mahaprabhu. And in Mahaprabhu's later pastimes you'll find these two names, Govinda and Kashishwar Pandit, both mentioned very prominently in the services to Lord uh, Chaitanya in Jagannath Puri. So in this way we have this example of spiritual master to disciple in the teachings of Ishwar Puri. Now Mahaprabhu was understood by Ishwar Puri, as I mentioned, to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But as he was playing the role of his guru, he gave him instructions. And these are four particular instructions that Ishwar Puri imparted unto Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The first one he departed to him. In the age of Kali, there are no principles of religion, save and accept the chanting of the holy names. This chanting of the holy names is the essence and the purport of all scriptures. The second point he made. By chanting the holy name, one gets freedom from material existence. And thus, being free from material existence, one will be qualified for the darshan of the Supreme Lord. The third point. He says, there are four principles of material life. Economic development, sense gratification, religiosity, and liberation. But, there is a fifth principle. And that is love of Godhead. And before this fifth principle of love of Godhead, the other four take the straw from their street and fold it in their hands in humility. And then the fourth instruction he gave was that, my dear boy, you should simply continue this chanting of the holy name, this dancing, this sankirtan, this association with the devotee, Sadhu Sangha, and thus spread Krishna Nam and deliver all those who are fallen in this age of Kali. So these are the four instructions given by Ishvara Puri. And this is a mood and a list of suitable instructions that can be applicable to all of us in our devotional service. So we'll finish there, having spoken about Madhavendra Puri, that sprout of love of Godhead, 
how it manifested into the sapling of Ishvar Puri, and how that full bloomed into the tree of devotional service as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So once again, we thank you very much for joining us this, e this evening, and we bring to close another chapter in the lives of the Vaishnava Charis. Hare Krishna.